Samsung just can't stop making products. For the world's largest handset vendor, maybe that's not a surprise, but a big part of yesterday's London event was also tablets, and we'll cover those. We've also got a ton of reviews from Nokia, Blackberry, and, of course, Samsung to talk over, and a pretty concrete-looking leak of the iPhone 5S. All that, plus some delightfully unscheduled segues into the weeds, and a thought thread from our very own Brandon Miniman on episode 049 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once-a-week podcast from Pocket Now, where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, editorial director at Pocket Now, and today I'm joined by editor in chief Brandon Drum Solo Miniman. Good morning may to I, you. Yeah, I do a drum solo to start us no. off. Oh, you can you can underscore Taylor's introduction if you like. Yes, go ahead. Okay, when Taylor comes on, tell, tell me when he's going to say something. And senior editor Taylor the <laughs> Hater Martin. Good morning to you. <laughs> Hello, governor. <laughs> what? Good morning, both of you gentlemen. Yeah, oh, this marks an historic point in history. First time Taylor using a new dialect. First time Brandon not asking if I if he has made his father proud. One second, one second. Can we all do our best? Hello, Gavna. No, no, yes. no. I I will not. I, I, Hello, Gavna. <laughs> all right. Is that your is that your best? Is that your best? No. All right. Let me let me do mine. It might max out the mic. Oh, dear God. I can, I can just watch the listener count just, just plummeting into the basement. <laughs> that, that sounded like a grandma. Yeah. <laughs> that my grandma voice. Was it? Okay. Like that makes more sense. My, Michael, I really think you should participate in this. Do, 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 do you? Yeah, no, it's funny. Isn't it funny how, like, thoughts can diverge and, and differ and stuff? Maybe I'll do what I did on the Pocket Now Live, and I'll, I'll, just, keep, I'll just keep telling you no until the end of the season, and uh, then I'll do it on the last episode of the season, just like the Good Iron now. Man thing. Before so I you say are now officially Buzz Killington of this podcast. Who wants to hear a good story about a bridge? Let's go. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let's let's uh, <laughs> kick it off the thought thread here, and because uh, we have a lot to talk about in the way of Samsung news, because God, they had a lot of stuff to come out yesterday, and Anton Dinoj has died of exhaustion somewhere uh, on the Thames, unfortunately. So no. <laughs> <laughs> God, he did a lot of videos yesterday. I want to. I want to jump to him. I want to cover him. But first, I want to hear what Brandon is thinking for his thought thread. Uh, yeah. So the uh, it's interesting because in the smartphone industry, we've had all sorts of conversations over the years. We've had conversations about specs and and CPU speed and amount of RAM. We've had conversations about screen resolution and how high it really needs to be and what is what is really good and screen types and varieties. We've had conversations about hardware, about metal versus plastic versus soft touch, thin versus thick. But there's really a conversation that we're just starting to have now, and I think it's very exciting. And it is because we've had all those conversations and we're at a point where screen light resolution is good, hardware design is good. Um, uh, materi- uh, material stuff. Materials, yes. Ma- materials and design quality is just good. And the conversation we are having now, and I think Apple started the conversation, is UI design, where we're starting to talk about color palettes and sizes of icons and flat designs and rounded edges versus squared off edges. And what I think is going to happen is next year is going to be the year of, of UI design. And I think Samsung's going to kill TouchWiz next year. And they're probably working on something feverishly now uh, that is as innovative to UI design as, you know, the Galaxy S3 was to to Android devices. And, uh, you know, I think HTC is going to be further modifying sense. And this is so exciting because we've got these devices that are so capable and powerful and they're good in every other way. They're very well-rounded. But the UIs are kind of the same that they've been since the beginning. They're about the same. And I think I think that also Key Lime Pie the next version of Android, is also going to be a part of this conversation because it's been a while since Android really has changed. It has, and I, I think we're starting to hear rumors of some some uh, fundamental underpinnings of Android changing in Key Lime Pie as well, uh, which will dictate further evolution of the UI. Of course, uh, Android, Android is user experience is headed by the UI guy, Matias Duarte, and, and I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see some... Uh, not, not necessarily massive changes, but definitely some further refinements to that platform. 
Um, I would be very pleased if 2014 was the year of the UI. I think it's overdue. I think uh, we're a lot of you know, software designers are sitting on, are resting on their laurels, and um, I don't think it's time for that. I don't think anything is quite good enough to be sat on yet and kind of, you know, codified and locked in. Um, I really hope it is the year that we see some some contextual changes in in, in UI development. Um, what some people are calling undesign. I posted an article about this, um, on, or not an article. Uh, it was a post. I shared something on Google Plus about it, but it was um, looking at the changes of Android side by side from version one to the most recent version, and the biggest changes are that things are being taken out. So all these graphical elements that have been put into the operating system, like um, gradients and all these useless things, have been taken out, and it's flat. It's It's Mm -hmm. basic, and and they're going back to basics. But now it's a point where we can go back to, or or not go back, progress forward. Because people understand how touchscreens work. When smartphones first came out, they were kind of new to this thing, and they didn't know how to navigate, how to do certain things on a touchscreen. And now we've been trained over the course of five or six years to long press if we want to see more you know, long press to swipe with two fingers, right? To swipe up, to swipe down, to swipe from the edge of the screen, and, and that gives a, that gives the designers a lot more flexibility. As a as a yeah. basic example, just because I have the Apple website up here, um, you know, the iOS six and below, when you go into Safari, there, that bar on the bottom with back, forward, bookmarks, and tabs is persistent. But in iOS seven, they're hiding it. Which, if they did that three or four years ago, people would be like, "Holy crap, where's the bookmark? Where, where's all the stuff?" But now people How do are like, "Go back." Yeah. yeah, yeah, people kind of have figured it out. Yeah, people are catching up to advanced UI concepts. Like, people are, I think, more apt today to be able to slide panes back and forth to be like, if there's no back button, well, what if I just tap and drag? Oh, look, I can move the screen over. Oh, okay, I don't need a button. Yeah, I think people are getting caught up to to smarter UI, and, and that's a good thing because now we don't have to deal with UI that's as boring. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and as impeding as current ones are. Right. Like, but my biggest problem with BlackBerry 10 so far, I mean, this is the first time yeah, I've used Taylor it. Yeah, both Taylor Martin and I have BlackBerry Q10s in hand, by the way. Yeah. yeah. That's why they sound um, so morose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glum today. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no um, it's not true. There's I love so mine. much. There, it is not true. There's so much. Um, is it dystopia that I'm looking for in the operating system? Is no, that the word I'm looking for? No, dystopia? D- dissociation, I think. No, that's not the right word. It's inconsistency well well i just want to say disjointedness it, it's like it, it's like two creepiness. completely different people designed it <laughs> yeah and okay. sometimes you'll get a back button on the screen sometimes you swipe yes why not mm. just make everything swipe backwards yeah, there is a lot because of inconsistency in there actually i want to say that i am going to be talking to the uh, i believe the, the vp of user experience at blackberry next week um, and I, 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 you know, it's not going to be this like hard hitting thing where it's like, why isn't this consistent? But I'm very interested in finding out how some of these cues came to be, and also uh, what elements, like what they're going to continue to do with the astonishing tribe people. Because remember, BlackBerry uh, assimilated the astonishing tribe, and you yeah. can see that in uh, like the Compass and the Clock apps. Those are just so gorgeous on BlackBerry 10. The that is, tribe is awesome. Yeah. They're awesome, amazing, but amazing. It's, it's, it's it seems like that that was squandered. I mean, besides the the clock app, which no one really cares about, what else has been brought forth from from this company? And that's that's going to be one of my that's going to be one of my questions. I want to see, yeah. I want to see what other elements actually came from the astonishing tribe. But you got to remember, there was a lot of brain drain as well when BlackBerry acquired the astonishing tribe. Uh, they uh, they lost some some pretty pivotal people there who who kind of left after the acquisition. So. Um, also, um, go ahead. to to counter your point about screens kind of hitting their their peak, Brandon, uh, mm-hmm. phone screens that is. Um, I was reading a piece that uh, Stefan Content Constantinescu. Yes, I got it, Constantinescu, friend of um, the show, Stefan Constantinescu. Yes, yes, he was on here a couple weeks ago. Um, he shared a piece on his site that said that in 2014 we can expect to surpass the 500 PPI point with WQXGA displays. That's 2560 by 1600. <laughs> that's the resolution you have on the Nexus 10. Squeeze down into a 5-inch phone, 6-inch phone. 
No. Um, why? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but, four, four, you know, I think 2015 were 4K displays, and, you know, that's like in the 700 PPI, I think. But uh, that's an interesting step in between. I, I don't really get it. I mean, it... it, it I get it for, um, for phones like the Galaxy Mega or this yeah. rumored 6-inch phone. But what are the odds that it'll also go down to smaller phones? That's ugh, it's why? an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, well, since why? we're talking about UI a little bit, uh, we should talk about this event that happened yesterday where every device in the room basically ran the same UI. The and UI that the we're tired of. <laughs> and <laughs> hardware looked the same. Everything. Yeah, Samsung Brandon. has mastered making computers look like smartphones. Mm-hmm. That's Mike, yeah. Mike, yeah. I, I think you are fantastic at segues, and I just want to try you out on something. <laughs> I want to do a segue from one topic to another, and I'm going to tell you what they are, and you have to think of a segue. So we're talking about a nice sushi restaurant in New York City, and you need to talk about the Galaxy S4 Zoom. So what would you say to segue from yeah. that to the... Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I mean, wasabi is awesome, and it's one of my favorite things to eat. And when I, when I get it right in that nose there when you you know you, you get a good snuff load of it it's like zoom you know what i mean I, and which which of course brings us to to samsung's bizarre device nice i, I would have said nice? something about zooming in to take a picture so i could instagram my sushi in hd you know what and hey, taylor you know what that tells us that you, I hate you, Instagram. That you are not ready to be a podcast host yet. Um, no, I'm a Segway <laughs> Crusher for a reason. I crushed Segways for a reason. Segway Crusher. Let's talk about this freaking Zoom because this thing confuses the bejesus out of me. Now, we talked about this, uh, what, a week ago? Whenever this last, thing, it was last it was, week. It was the fifteenth. Yes. Whenever this, whenever this thing leaked, I don't know. I, 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 my brain was, is still hurting because of this. It was Zoom. official last week. Was it? Yeah, they launched it last or announced it last week. Right. So at the premiere, this is what we should talk about. At the premiere event, the Samsung kind of split its focus between devices that we'd already seen and devices we hadn't. And most of the devices we'd already seen were Galaxy devices. And the Ative line is was the um, the kind of surprise of the day, or uh, Ative or Ative, depending on what region you're in. Creative. Yeah, creative, originative. Which I made. I, I was. I, I didn't know that was a real word. Apparently, it's a innovative. Real word. Yeah, innovative. innovative. Right. Yeah. They're, oh man, they are trying <laughs> real hard with that. So Samsung's event itself, I think we can all agree, gents, was uh, was weird, right? Uh, as, yeah. As usual. Do you, do you think that they they thought about these words before they came up with the brand Ative or Ative? And do do you think they came up with these words, or one day somebody walked in the office and he's like. Those letters are in creative someone, and innovative. Someone must have sneezed. Uh, uh, Tiff. Well, it's, well, like, it's Vita backwards, right? Oh, so, yeah, the, yeah, so yeah. that's so. There's that weirdo. Element. And everyone thinks about how words sound backwards, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, roll, 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 <laughs> Res- roll, yeah. Res- Res- yeah. Oh, I know my name backwards. Roll <laughs> Rams. I don't know why name, I know it, but I do it. Your name backwards is actually pretty awesome. You could be a Superman villain. <laughs> Yo, why why is the Galaxy S4 Zoom called Galaxy S4? How does it have anything to do with the Galaxy S4? How does the Galaxy S4 Mini have anything to do with it? I wrote an article about You know about what? This. I feel like Taylor Martin wrote an article about this. Yeah. Course, I yes. did. About every I two or three months, did. one of us has to write an article about how Samsung is just destroying <laughs> the Galaxy brand. Yeah, there is no, like, no resemblance... Nothing no. between these two so, phones, other than that the the fact that they had the same metal band around the outside or plastic right. band around the outside, and the same and the same touch was UI, like basically. So the, the Galaxy S4 Zoom, listeners, if you don't remember, is basically the modern incarnation of the Galaxy camera, except it's a phone. It's a Galaxy camera with a phone tacked on, and it looks like somebody took like a wet sander to the corners, right? It's just a little more yeah. rounded. Um, but there is one interesting thing about it. So it has this extendable lens with, what is it, 20 times optical zoom, 10 times optical zoom? 10. Okay, it's 10 times optical zoom. Uh, tail, um, Anton got a, a sweet hands-on with it. He did a, a cool cross-table optical zoom and took a picture of another Galaxy S4 zoom, which was very meta. Uh, but the, the, the coolest part about it, I think, is this rotating ring. So you know how yeah, on, that like, is cool. Yeah, like on on attachable camera lenses, you have this focus ring and you have the zoom ring. On the Galaxy S4 Zoom, the ring not only controls the zoom, but it also it, they, Samsung has built some kind of software interface for it, so that there's a ring displayed on the screen, and you manipulate the UI elements on that ring with the ring in your hand. 
So it's yeah. what? kind of interesting. Yeah. Do you just, yeah. Did you see that? It's Brandon? a shortcut. Like it's it's a shortcut. Hardware shortcut is what it is. Yeah. But what I don't get is okay. So it extends the zoom. But how when you you spin it for shortcuts, how does it not extend the zoom? Is it, it does the zoom only pop out when you have the camera app open? Yeah, I think right. So the the, the when the donut is on the screen, that's when you're using the the ring to control the UI elements, and when you're well, that's just in viewfinder. Anywhere. Well, no, it's not because the, uh, the the that ring only shows up every so often. I wish Tony was on the air, but he's six hours ahead of us, and he was up all night shooting like forty videos, so we can't ask him to be on the air. But anyway, it's, I don't know the, the zoom. It, it's so strange to me because they positioned it as like. I wrote a note to myself while I was watching the live stream. I was like, ah, oh, finally, maybe we get to find out who the Zoom is targeted at. And not really. Nobody. Right. All we heard was, like, this is someone who cares a little bit more about camera quality and wants optical zoom and optical image stabilization. But they didn't even, they didn't even go so far as to try and justify the added size and weight. They were just like, this is just for somebody who cares a little more about a camera. I'm like, y- yeah, but it's huge. <laughs> you never responded to my, my message yesterday. What would you say? <clears throat> Where is it? Come on. What, on Twitter? Oh, uh, no, I sent you a message. Um, <clears throat> Did you send me a BBM? In, Did you BBM me, bro? No, in Talk. In Talk. Oh, in Google Hangout? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's Talk because we haven't upgraded our Google Apps account. Well, what did you say, Taylor? I'm pulling it up. I just quoted part of my uh, Stop Calling Every New Phone a Galaxy S4 article. Um so, or maybe you like taking pictures of faraway objects and simply walking closer is just too hard. And I scratched it out and I said, or maybe you prefer a great camera, a decent phone, and don't like carrying more than one device. Um, but it's not really even a decent phone. It's it's a low-end, mid-range phone. So they're calling it a Galaxy S4 and its specifications are not top quality. But if you've paid attention to Samsung branding, the S after the, the brand, so Galaxy S, the Ative S, S means flagship. S means yeah. top end, high specs, or it's supposed you know, to. top of the line. Yeah. That's what and then they go and brand the Galaxy S4 Mini, the Galaxy S. Well, we're about to talk about Zoom. that, right? We're about to actually, we're, we're going to hit the Mini in a second. I want to talk about the, the Active here because I think that's the closest thing. It gets the closest to the original Galaxy S4 of these devices that we saw yesterday. Wait a sec. Yes. There was uh, your there was your sec. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you wasted your sec. Can, can I can I can we do do a little bit of a tangent here and talk about something that I don't think we've ever talked about on the podcast, which is the butterfly S. What? Wait a minute. Yeah. How are you just gonna oh, like yeah. launch that torpedo in my Samsung boat? You told me that we could keep it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. I, all right. Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely. So, like, talk about coffee, but hey. What? Yeah. You know what? what's going to happen? Brand, it's going to hit 1130. Brandon's going to leave, and Taylor, you and I are going to be stuck on topic three. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Brandon. This Butterfly S, uh, you know, the the, the original, the, the, the droid DNA is based on the Butterfly, and it has a S4 Pro chip, which is a, provides a little bit of lag, but it's got the 1080p screen, 5-inch, which is a nice size. It's got this nice big glass panel on the front. But this Butterfly S has the... Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 at 1.9 gigahertz, which is the same chip that's in the Galaxy S4, and it has boom sound, and it looks really badass. I mean, this is going to be a cool phone. It's just, it's huge. It's very big. It's also running Sense. So, that's awesome. <laughs> I yeah. don't like Sense. Yeah, if, it it, makes... if it's running New Sense, then I'm okay with it. Um, um, I can't tell. It does look like the New Sense. It looks like it has uh, the clock widget from uh, Blink Feed on the lock screen. Do you guys think this is coming to the U.S.? Uh, no. Doubt it. Not, not, not anything with the butterfly branding. I don't think that's coming to, to the U.S. No. no. Well, maybe not the Troy DNA 2? It might come as the, the DNA S or DNA 2. or Right. So that's whatever. an interesting question. I don't know if Verizon is going to want to preserve that DNA brand once they get the one in. I mean, you know, Verizon, like Stephen made a good point in one of his articles. He's like, you know, Verizon tends to be very prima donna esque and, you know, they like their exclusives and whatever. So it's possible they might want to keep that DNA brand afloat. Uh, that may be what they're doing with this new sort of droid resurgence. Have you noticed that some of the, they, they, re, they woke up their old droid brand on Twitter? It was like Droid Landing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that. Yep, yep. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of don't know. I'm and, and they, giving away phones again. Yeah. That'd be awesome. It's it's getting a little bit late for them to do the HTC One. 
Uh, so it's very maybe maybe they've cha- have a change of plan. They're going to do the the DNA too, um, to kind of differentiate a little bit. It would be interesting. I, w- I would honestly rather see this than the HTC One on Verizon, and I know that okay. would make some people mad. <clears throat> Because I, I, even me, in a sense, it would kind of upset me because I want to see the same phone launched worldwide on every carrier. But this is basically the one, but I like the DNA's uh, uh, design a little better. You do? Um, not, 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 not necessarily the build quality, but the design. I mm. like the colors and, and everything. Hmm. The red, I like the black and red accent. So and nice. And well, and the, the only, I guess the only downside is that it, the, the back is shiny, slippery plastic, not soft touch. It's not soft touch? No. Well, that is weak nonsense. That just ruined it. That completely ruined the phone for me. Yeah, there, there's some speculation also that the Galaxy, excuse me, that the HTC One Mini might be plastic uh, in another piece here. I think. Uh, was, uh, yeah. Stop the mini phone. Speculation. Can we? Can uh, actually? Can we talk about the mini phone? Because I, I don't have anything to say about the Galaxy S4 Active other than uh, I'm excited about it because it's rugged and waterproof and. Second point, I'm getting one today. So um, it has, yeah. it has a TFT panel. TFT panel. It does. Now, hold on a second. Now, somebody on Twitter told me, or in the comments, I don't remember, su- suggested that uh, AMOLED actually also uses TFT technology. And TFT stands for thin film transistor, and it just means that every pixel has a dedicated transistor controlling it, I believe. So is that true? Can it, are the are the terms AMOLED and TFT exclusive, or are they not? Because I don't know. I've I've always only heard TFT LC. Me too. LCD. Yep. I've yeah. never. I, I don't think. I've that never heard can... of TFT AMOLED. That's... Yeah. It doesn't even roll off the tongue. No, 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 no. Sounds sounds disgusting. TFT backplane technology is crucial in the fabrication of AMOLED displays. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. All right. The thing is, though, generally when we talk TFT versus AMOLED, we are talking LCD versus AMOLED. Anyway, the Galaxy Mm. S4 Active will be in my office today, I believe, in the afternoon, a few PSs to be believed, and I will have an unboxing, and I'm going to use it for a weekend. I'm going to get active with it, and that's going to be fun. You can go swimming? I might go swimming. Tony has already thrown it in a tank of water, though, so that we've got that. You guys didn't tell me that these waterproof phones cannot be operated when they're submerged in water. You didn't you know, that? know that. Yeah. <laughs> Capacitive display goes haywire underwater because water it is. It, it doesn't go haywire. It goes haywire at the at the water air interface. So if half the half the screen is in water, yeah. half of it is not. It'll go nuts. But once it's underwater, it just doesn't do anything. It just sits. Well, so, yeah, it, so you, you can't, can't use it because you can't use it in the shower. Literally, you can use it. You can. You just got to get it out of the water stream, bruh. Yeah, it can't be like fully submerged or yeah. it. Okay, it'd be like. Touching the phone with ten digits at the same time, like the phone doesn't really know what to do. Mm. Yeah, and so do because you know, water conducts electricity, so it reads water as basically as input. Yeah, uh, sort of. Although pure water doesn't really conduct electricity all that well. Um, well, pure water. Who has pure water? Yeah, very few people. <laughs> but uh, what, what was the the thing I was going to say? Um, I, I bathe in distilled water. Yeah, I generally only I, I get yeah, <laughs> I get de- de- demineralized water all the time in my bathtub. But no, here's <laughs> here's the thing. I uh, this is further proof that physical hardware keys are great. Uh, in the case of the Galaxy S4 Active, it makes a lot of sense now that those are not capacitive keys at the bottom; they're physical, and also. Mm-hmm. Uh, a physical camera button. This makes a physical camera button much more crucial. The Kia Zara Torque, which I reviewed, has a physical camera button, and I was able to take some underwater pictures, and that was great. Does the Active have a camera button? I don't think it does. It has, because uh, when they were doing the demonstration, he said press the volume button to, exactly. to take a picture. Right, and that's what I think that shortcut was built specifically for that, because the Galaxy S4, you can't shoot with the volume rocker, can you? I don't no. think so, but yeah. you can you can root it. It's always the uh, whatever. Let's talk you, about the, you can root it. You can root it. Let's talk about the Galaxy S4 Mini, which I think we, which we've hated on like what four shows in a row. But then I saw Tony's hands on, and I thing looks cute, dudes. Does anybody like it? I think no. it, I think it looks cute. I, I like no. the, I like the little the, the hardware. I like the build. It, I don't think it's mini enough. I mean, it's like a it's like the regular size phone of last year. But have it's you like have the, you no, no, have you watched Tony's video though? Well, Tony's got hands the size no, 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 of no, 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 um, right, a giant. No, so he starts with the S4 mini in his hand, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then he brings the S4 into the frame, and the S4 yeah. looks like a Note too. Like, I'd like, like to wow, put the that is small. I'd like to put the S4 mini beside the Mega. 
just to see. <laughs> oh, the Mega. Because because the Note 2 to me feels small now because I carried the Mega for a week. That's And so the Note ridiculous. 2 feels like an S4. Like, it, it feels so small now. You want to just... You know, they weren't showing the Mega at this thing, probably because it wasn't a new product, but I was actually a little surprised that the Mega didn't factor into their lineup here, but I guess they were just keeping it to the S stuff. Um, it is the ugly duckling of their brand. Like, it, it it's a... What I said in my review, it's a beta test. It is a public beta test that you have to buy into. This is exactly what the Mega is. Mm-hmm. Weak. <laughs> Weak. It is. Well, we, we, I, was, I have your uh, review kind of tacked in the rundown. I don't want to talk about it that long, but uh, I know you had to send your review uh-huh. unit back. But yeah, I decided not to keep it. See, I really wanted it. You until, opted not to buy it. Yeah. Chicken. I, no, I wanted it, and then, <laughs> and then I thought about a couple things. Um, I like the size. And I, the lag really didn't bother me because really the only lag that I experienced was in the app drawer, which if I had used my own launcher, which I would have installed launcher, uh, action launcher on it, it would have been fine. There would probably have been no lag whatsoever. But what really turned me away is one, no LTE. And I knew if I bought it, then a couple weeks down the road, there's probably going to be one for AT&T. There is going LTE. to be one on it. Exactly. It's, it's I mean, FCC. I, oh, yeah, is it really? Yeah, there's one with LTE coming exclusively to AT&T. Um, and being or trying to resell that, I only try to buy phones that I know that I can resell in a couple months because you know yeah. what, I, what? I buy so many phones that I can't afford to just you, buy every phone and keep them all. So do I you think resell the, resale, them. the resale value is going to crash on that thing? It, it'll it'll crash and then nobody will buy it because nobody knows what it is. Yeah, it'll be like, is that a Note two? No, it's a Mega. What's that? You know. <laughs> Does it have the S Pen? No, it does not. I like that every buyer of Taylor Martin smartphones is is a Carolinian. That's awesome. Yes, and they've got cowboy hats on. What's that? <laughs> What's <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Shoot it. Oh <laughs> uh, well I I, I, I wish you I'll lo- just take I'll just take that pixie. <laughs> Alright, slow down, folks. I, I have you, a question. What's your question? <laughs> Well, when Taylor was talking about uh, the Galaxy Mega 6.3 and potentially keeping it as a daily driver, I thought that po- it's possible that uh, that Taylor discovered something new, which is that there's a huge marginal benefit to be had from having a giant phone. And I kind of considered Taylor your your uh, your change of heart uh, to be a vote of confidence against that. Um, but oh, it, oh, I totally like the size. But it's it sounds like um, it's just it's just the LTE issue and the resale it's the resale issue. Yeah, I haven't had an LTE phone on AT and T in uh, since the One X. Mm, <laughs> I'm ready for LTE again. I need LTE. Yes. Oh, I mean, I've had one review phone with LTE, and that was a Galaxy S4. No, well, two. Now, sorry. now you have the the BlackBerry the Q10 has LTE. <laughs> okay, three. There you go. There you go. Out of out of like eight devices, I've been stuck with. There We've were been two or three fun. of them. That's there were like two or three of them with Edge. Yeah, stuck that, on Edge, and I had to review that. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I carried a second phone just so I could actually have data. Swinging from the absolute basement and bottom of the barrel as far as specs to every spec you could possibly imagine. Are we ready to talk about our um, our tablet dream device? Yes, well, I know you are. Oh. I'm, I'm Ooh. buying one. You're buying one? I'm what, buying one. What are you, Daddy Warbucks over there? How much money you got? We're talking about the Samsung Ativ Q. How much is it? They didn't announce the price. Uh, well, the comment thread on my on my fanboy post, uh, somebody was saying that the Netherlands price has been fixed at 1,700 euro. Uh, and then <laughs> somebody else came in to, to back them up on that. Yeah, I know. Uh, the Ativ no, Q. But, yeah, th- Things are always. It, it's not a direct translation. Like you can't say right. That, no, because you know, iPhones cost a thousand dollars elsewhere. And yeah, no, yeah. I know. We don't know what it's going to be stateside. We really don't. But the TFQ uh, listeners is just this ridiculous thing. I love how they presented it. They the it's like the one thing in the presentation yesterday that they did right, where they were like, "Hey, check it out. We got this tablet." It's like, okay, what is it? Oh, it's a Windows tablet. Oh wait, it also runs an additional Windows eight Android. And also, it's a 13-inch screen. And also, that screen is very high resolution. And also, it has an S Pen. Oh, and also, it has a keyboard. Oh, and also, you can flip the screen around. Like, they just kept bringing stuff out. And it's like, my God, this thing has everything you could possibly want in a tablet. That is the first thing that has ever made me want another Windows machine since I left Windows over four years ago. Yeah. 
This, can you can yeah. you walk can can you walk me through uh, this desire to have a dual booting device? Yeah, so it's it's this thing where you know when you choose a platform, you sacrifice some. You you come into it knowing that if you're getting a say a, a Windows phone, you know you're going to sacrifice Google integration. If you get a BlackBerry, you know you're going to sacrifice like a lot of everything. If you get a uh, an iOS device, you know you're not going to have a great multitasking thing. So having two OS Two OSs on the same device um, gives you allows you the opportunity to, to give the best of both worlds, and usually you're confined to this uh, environment where you're dual booting. You're like, okay, I'd like to go to Android now, and then you have to like turn it off and back on and select a different. But you know, it's like, ugh. but this device lets you just do it with the swipe of a finger through some kind yeah, of emulation. All they right, side by side. Yeah. Okay, so so in in actual use uh, and, and in terms of practicality, when would give me a scenario when you would be so thankful for this. Anything that Windows 8 does that um, that Android does better. Like, here's one that I people jumped down my throat for before I'm done with my point. Uh, Windows 8's Twitter client, okay? It's prettier than the Android one, but it's also, in my opinion, less... Uh, it, it doesn't work as well for me. So I would use the Android client, even though it would look awful on a 13-inch screen... And, you know, yes, you can go into the browser on Windows, but I don't want to do that. I just want to use a touch-friendly thing. I don't want to swipe over there. So that's what I would do. I would pin the Android Twitter client to the Windows 8 desktop, or I would pin a better-looking Android Twitter client to the Windows 8 desktop. Uh, what I would, what, where I would really enjoy this is having all my computer functions on Windows and then having dedicated apps for things. Yeah. Dedicated Google Plus, dedicated YouTube, dedicated Google Play Movies. Yeah, oh, I'd have a whole like Google, Music. Google section of, of Google apps, of Android apps yeah. sitting on my Windows 8 start screen. That's the, what I've wanted for a long time. The performance looked not so good on, on the, in the Android environment, right? No, it looked fine. When, when, when did it not look good? I, my lag meter uh, went to about a 7.2, and I... <laughs> what do you mean? When Tony was playing with it or would, in the demo? Um, I haven't seen Tony's yet, but some of the other demos I've seen, it, it just, it, it was... So, yeah, we should make this clear. We didn't mention that the Android build that is running on at least the versions they have in London right now is a stock Android build of 4.2.2. There's no touch whiz, there's no anything going on. They need to leave it that way. Yeah, but they also need to, f- to make the S Pen work. And they yeah. need they need some customization because they have a digitizer in there as well, uh, the same with the same thousand plus levels of sensitivity too. So I don't know. I think they have um, to do something. I, I've started noticing um, S Pen support for third party apps. Like I use, really? uh, yeah, I use uh, Photoshop Touch a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. I love that app. It's so awesome. People always ask me, how do you blur out things in your image? And I'll, I'll uh, take a picture and I'll. Just show what I want and blur everything else else out beyond recognition. So it, it, I get some pretty cool effects using it. And I was using it the other day to trace my um, the loop that I was making in my car. I was taking some back roads and I was taking some very curvy back roads and driving my car around. And I got home and I'm like, I want to share you know where I drove. And um, I was tracing and when I did, it said S Pen or not S Pen, but but stylus support. If you don't have um, a stylus, I don't think that comes up. But it follows your S-Pin around. It turns on like the... the um, air view? Yeah. Yeah. So it turns on air view when you're going to draw. Yeah, it, it, they it's were, pretty cool. They were demoing that in in Berlin at IFA when they were talking about the Note 10.1. And they were like, hey, you want to get your picture taken on this moped? And I'm like, sure I do. And then they kind of <laughs> used an S-Pen to, to cut out my stuff. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, this thing is cool. So it's big. It's, it's heavy. It's uh, what, uh, 1.3 kilograms or something. Do we know how much it's going to cost? No, <laughs> no. We just went over we that. Ju- we just talked. Where, where were you? <laughs> and, and I'm watching Tony's video right now, and it I, doesn't so th- seem laggy. That's I, I, I. I'm watching Tony's videos. That's where I've been because uh, I want to. I want to see okay. see if he see if there's any lag in, in his demonstration. But Th- it, it not. I'm not really seeing any. No, no. It's it's pretty fluid in his. It demo. shouldn't have any. It's got a Haswell processor. <laughs> I would love this thing. <laughs> I would love this thing in a seven inch form factor. So, uh, oh, okay, dude. I would love this thing in a. F- Five-inch form factor for the ta- for yeah, handheld, yeah. but uh, and now as I said yesterday, what is this like? Two thousand four and the the HTC yeah, shift. Yeah, the HTC. Yeah, it's the tilt. The tilt one. Oh, uh, the shift. The the Windows PC that was oh, pocket sized. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't care about that. But here's my thing. Uh, <laughs> Adam Lane will <laughs> punch you in the throat. <laughs> I was gonna make Adam. So Adam Lane also BT Dubs. Yeah, it's Lane. Uh, Lane. Adam Lane it's also. Line. 
Adam Lane, <laughs> it's Lane. was at a oh. at an event yesterday as well. He was at a New York City Pepcom event, and he got some hands-on time with the Ative Tab 3, which I don't care about and don't want to talk about. But here's a point that uh, – it, listen, it's a thin Windows 8 tablet. The, hooray. Uh, it, it ruins ruins Windows RT. It's a, What do you mean? Oh. It, it runs Windows 8 Pro. Yeah, I know. So yeah, when and they it's... when they announced it on stage yesterday, it was fun. They just completely eviscerated Windows RT in front of yep. everybody. Samsung was just like, "It runs the full version of Windows 8, not RT. Windows and it's 8. the size of an Android tablet." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's impressive. I, um, I don't mean to sell it short, but I forgot to mention one thing about the Ative Q, the possibly the most epic tablet ever constructed. Uh, somebody was bringing up a point in the comments on one of these pieces where it's like, why is this any different than the Asus Playbook Trio? And then I admittedly had to go look that up because I missed, I wasn't like in the office for the Asus <laughs> release, so I just, I don't know about any of that stuff. I was like, oh, okay. It's the same basic thing except in a transformer form factor. It is a detachable screen and keyboard and it runs Android and Windows 8 side by side. So why am I more impressed with the Ative Q? And I want to hear y'all's answer, but for me... It's the fact that it's it's coming from Samsung. It has the S Pen support. It is an integrated product that is not separable, so I don't feel like I'm detaching an accessory. It's it's all blended together as one product that I can carry around. That that's what makes it more exciting to me. But what do you guys think? I can't find it. What's the name of this thing again? Uh, the Asus Playbook Trio. I don't think I don't think it's out. I don't yet. think it's. No. I don't think it's Playbook. Uh, oh, I, I'm I can't sorry. Find it. Sorry, what it, was I calling it? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's the something book. Uh, Asus Trio Transformer book. Sorry. Playbook. I've, I've really been thinking about BlackBerry a lot this week. I'm sorry. Remember the playbook? That was funny. Yeah, see, the, the playbook actually ran well. I was disappointed it didn't do yeah, well. Yeah, this, this doesn't do it for me. Because the, the difference is being able to hide that keyboard away, not... Not have to not fold it up fold and have it. To expose yeah. it all the time. Exactly. You, you just hide the keyboard when you don't want it, and when you want it, you pop it out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so That's th- the difference. Yeah. What about you, Brandon? Are you would you get a Transformer book tr- trio or a uh, or a, or an Asus? Uh, what is it called? A Tiv Q. A Tiv Q. Neither. I just don't see the point. Well, for me, I, I'd like it. I'd, I'd like it a lot. And and the price is. Um, is really the only thing that would turn me away, but uh, I don't think I'm. I'm not too worried about the price because you got to think about it. It is not an Android tablet, so you can't think about it as in it needs to be six hundred, seven hundred dollars. <throat> it's a Windows eight machine, and I would pay. I think my cutoff would be like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Oof! It's I don't know if I'd so. go that high. Yeah. I mean, I like I the know. thing, but boy, I don't want to pay. The, that no, much no, for no. It. That's like that's where I draw the line. I don't know that I would yeah. buy it there, but if it's any more than that, I absolutely would not. It's um, an but I, I mean, thing. ideally, ideally, I'd say I would guess this will be around a thousand or twelve hundred dollars. That's my guess. Yeah, because they've got something there. They've got the attention of everyone with this. They definitely do. It's got a thirty-two hundred by eighteen hundred screen. That is. Ridiculous. Yeah, so at 13 inches. And this is another thing. We were talking about jumbo tablets. Remember this time last year we were like, oh, we got all these jumbo tablets on the horizon. Who's going to be the first to do a 13-inch tablet? And then, like, Toshiba did one and kind of nobody really cared. You know, I saw that thing. I was uh, I was walking by their booth at CES, and the guy's like, don't you want to look at this tablet? I was like, I can see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big. And I walked yeah. off. <laughs> I can't the wait until we can crushed. talk about them. I can't wait until we, we... I remember we snaked our way through that booth, too, and we were like, anything new? You guys got anything new? No, nothing new? Okay, we got to go. But they had they had that really nice thing that I saw at IFA, that tiny little Nexus 7 aping thing, which was made out of metal and which was great, the XT370 or something like that, or 270. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter. Let's move on from the Ativ Q, even though I don't want to. Pricing is still not announced, and we will find out about this. I don't know. It kills me. It would kills be great me. if we could get one. I don't know if we can, because this is kind of a Samsung electronics thing, not a Samsung mobile thing, but we are going to try our best. So It'd be great if Samsung would learn to announce price at their launch or announcement events. I'm sure they're still debating it. You they, know? Don't, they don't want price to cloud people's uh, desire to, to get the product. Yeah, yeah but, okay, exactly but right. let, let's let's compare this to Apple because we always do. They announced everything, um, all their new products, all the new co- computers at WWDC. 
Right. Everything came with a price and, and a launch date. And a launch date. Everything. And, and most of them were like, it's available right now. Right. And the crazy so, thing about this is that there are people who are still going to fight you in the comments about that. And it was oh, like, no, yeah, why would you do that? But that's so that, – see, this is stupid. This is the thing where I cannot – I cannot go with anybody who would argue against you on this. There is a concrete, satisfying, uh, incredibly rewarding thing to come away from an event knowing what every product costs and when it's going to launch. And if you can't and, do that today, you, you shouldn't have announcements. And, and, and nobody and, else does it that way. Yeah, my friend Anthony on Twitter said, yeah, but what about the, uh, the new Mac Pro? And I said that wasn't an announcement. That was something everybody knew was coming, but... Even Apple said they made it very clear this is a sneak peek in something we didn't want to announce today. Right. We're not announcing it. We're, we're, we're announcing it, but we're just saying this isn't ready. And you know what? You're allowed it, to do that when you make yeah. a, a beer can computer. You're, you're allowed <laughs> well, when to you do an, that. When you announce like six new products and they're available right this minute, yeah, then you can say, to... hey, we're working on this and it'll be available in a couple months. We exactly. don't know price. I but wanna... not, not just... We've got this awesome thing, and here it is. It's official. Have a nice day. <laughs> like, thank you, I think. You know, it's funny. It's even even the live event dissolved that way. The, the announcement was like, yeah. now we're, we'll, be, we'll be giving you one more surprise before the night is out. Come join us in product experience. And then the video ends, and it's like, oh, what, what was the surprise? <laughs> yeah, on Twitter, like, he turned around. He's like, we've got one more thing. And I, was, I tweeted, one more thing. And he's like, we're going to have live music later. Yeah. Just, I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, Samsung <laughs> events are so them. funny. They're so ridiculous. Oh, the, the jokes that had no response whatsoever. Brandon, did, did you watch silent. this thing live as well? Were you, or you were on a phone call for half of it, right? I was not watching it live. Oh, my God. You missed out on some... Well, you know what? It, 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 in the first five minutes, I think I tweeted, I'm like, this already has way too many shades of Radio City Music Hall. I hate this already. And no, no tap dancing Tommy. I was so upset. Yeah, there was no tap dancing kid. It, it, it actually it was better than than the Galaxy S4 event, but not by much. Ugh. It was still grandiose. They had this enormous, enormous stage for two people to stand on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like it was bigger than my apartment building, not my my actual apartment, but the entire building that I live in. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was why? too big for the event. Uh, the guy's like, I'm going to go walk over here and do this demonstration. And, and three minutes later, he got to the other side of the stage. <laughs> yeah. And then it turned um, out to be a water tank that he could drop the Galaxy S4 active. And it's like, oh, I've seen that before. Whoa. Whoa. Brandon, is, there's an earthquake in your location, Brandon. Did, what? Did you, oh. Did you just have, like, a paper avalanche on your desk? <laughs> I just I just changed, I just changed position. Sorry, guys. Oh. Get, off my, get off my ass, okay? <laughs> I thought you were going to say you changed outfits. I was going to say that was very impressive because that was quick. I didn't know know I was supposed to stay in the same position the whole freaking podcast. Why 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 don't you use your cough button, brother? That's what it's there for. Maybe maybe you guys can stay totally stationary for 90 minutes, but I just can't. Do you know what I do? Do you know what I do during the podcast? Oh, you stand up. See, I'm in my swiveling chair, and I'm just swiveling back and forth the whole time. I look like a six-year-old on the podcast. I stand up so I jog in place, and you never know. (laughs) You guys are really sophisticated, and... And I, I wish to learn from you. <laughs> hey, uh, why won't the Galaxy NX be a big seller? Taylor, tell us about what the Galaxy NX is and uh, tell us why you don't think it'll sell. Because it has two features that really make it the Galaxy NX. What is it? It has LTE and TouchWiz. What is it? What is it overall is it? for the listeners is, that weren't paying attention? It is a mirrorless camera. So it's like a what we use on, on most of our videos and... Uh, we use the Sony NEX 5N, and you use the F3, I believe. Correct. Um, Jaime uses a, a 5N as well, and that is a mirrorless camera. So it's like a, almost a DSLR, but it's more pocketable. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I can't fit it in my pockets, but uh, the Galaxy Mega, or, well, no. Galaxy I'm NX. The Galaxy NX, <laughs> which is mega. It is very mega. Um, it's a mirrorless camera, so it's supposed to be kind of in the same class as what we use, but it's the size of... The the NX twenty, which yeah. is another a Samsung camera, which is like a DSLR. The, yeah, I feel like it's the it's a big old it's a big camera, right? It yeah, looks it is, huge. It's, it's bigger than the NX twenty, so it's bigger than their official DSLR, but mm. it's um, actually got more 
specs along the lines of a uh, mirrorless camera. Yeah, like so a, th- this, micro is, four this is an Android-powered camera that's much bigger than the Gal- Galaxy camera, and thankfully it doesn't have a phone built into it, but it does no have phone. LTE, and it's got, it's got Android. Well, so it did, might as well have a phone. It has a 1.5 or 1.6 gigahertz quad-core processor. Right, uh, but it's, it's, it's a lot it's more like a specs. Galaxy camera than, than any of the phones, yeah. It, yeah. But, but it's huge. and It is enormous. I, I personally really, really like it, and said. I'd like to have it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to really have Stick one because <laughs> for us, for people like us, my point in this article was for people like us who go to trade shows and need cameras with connectivity, yeah. there's nothing more awesome than having a camera with LTE built in. Like I feel like this camera was built for the press. And we've had no some. We, we, we've had uh, we've had some interesting uses for the Galaxy camera um, at, at trade shows where we um, can can shoot back photos very quickly to the guys uh, that are in front of their computers and, and posting news and so forth. So, yeah. but but, but th- this this goes really to the next level, I guess, in yeah. Im- image quality. It yeah, because the, the Galaxy camera kind of takes crap pictures. <laughs> for a dedicated camera, it takes crap pictures. Yeah, what's the sensor size on the NX twenty? Um, twenty point three. Yeah. And you have interchangeable lenses. Now, Brandon, uh, I, I, I'm interested, because Brandon was making a good point there. I'm interested in how much more efficiency, though, did that Galaxy camera bring us at events? Because we, we, can't, okay. you, we can't use the instant upload for video. We can't, because we have to edit our video first and then upload it. So we need a computer for that. So really, it's only good for uploading still shots to, like, Dropbox, for the, like you say, for the team at home. So. Well, well, what it does is it is it saves it saves time. Maybe not exactly at that moment because we're sitting in the chair and we're taking pictures of, of the event. But you know, if we didn't have that capability at some point during that day, maybe later in the hotel room or whatever, we would have to sit down and trans. It's not the longest process ever, but if the hotel Wi-Fi sucks or something, this way that the photos can simmer on the Galaxy camera, and if there's poor LTE or whatever, it'll eventually upload when it has a good signal. Well, so it just saves some time. Yeah, um, well, in theory, it would have worked a lot better when um, you guys went to a New York event and we were sitting here and I was getting pictures on Dropbox. If we had enabled Dropbox before you got to the event, because through the <laughs> entire event, I was getting pictures of Brandon's family and stuff. <laughs> no, I so. think that was mine. So what happened, listeners, I don't remember what the event was, but I was bringing my Galaxy camera along. And when I enabled Dropbox functionality, yeah, I enabled it from the event. And yeah, I think, Taylor, you guys got like 300 <laughs> pictures of not the event oh. at all. Yeah. So <laughs> at, after the, when the event was almost over, I got like the pictures of you guys sitting down in the crowd and the event was over and I finally got pictures of Jason McKenzie on stage. So it was an HTC event. Uh, okay. I was just like, awesome. This is, this is great. Was, that was the one announcement. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that was funny. But no, what, what's so great about this camera is um, the, the quality improvements. So it will take DSLR quality images or at least close to it and it uses all of the um, samsung nx camera lenses so if you've already got a samsung dslr which very 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 few people do this works perfectly you can sell the body of your camera you have by this thing and you've got a better camera or at least the same quality camera with more features but why i said this is not going to be a big seller is because there are several reasons so most of these cameras with Android built on them are built for consumers, basic users who want a better camera experience, who want more features in a plain old point-and-shoot camera. Enter Galaxy Camera, right? It's a phone with a camera built in, and uh, well, it, it's easier to use. Well, okay, not a phone, but it, it, it is yeah. a phone, yeah. but it doesn't have phone capabilities. Um, but this... This isn't going to carry a lightweight price like a like a point and shoot camera, like the Galaxy camera or the. Um, yeah, so it, it, it doesn't have a home, is what you're saying, because pros aren't going to buy it because it, yeah. it dumbs it down too much, and consumers aren't going to have enough money to buy it. Yeah, you don't have enough buttons. Pros like hardware buttons on their camera. They like toggles and switches because yeah. they can quickly access this stuff with analog buttons. Yeah. This you have just as many features, but you've got to dig through interface settings. So to change your aperture you're gonna have to go through it's like four pages just to get to your aperture settings (laughs) right um you know so pros are going to look at this and say this is ridiculous why would i ever use this and then you have those consumers who are like i'm not going to spend 10 or a thousand dollars 1200 bucks on a camera because it has android and lte like that doesn't suit my needs i'll just get a 
basic DSLR, a micro four thirds, or I'll just get a point and shoot camera and be happy. This so is good. This, this is good. It's, it's, a, it's a product that's good for marketing. It makes Samsung look good and innovative and, and bold. Yeah. So, so my point was that this appeals to a very, 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 very small demographic. Right. What, Us? Not, so, not really. But what, why does oh, well, it? But yeah, no, 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 no. I agree with you. And us, us is sort of it. But but here's the thing. Why? Look at what Samsung is doing. Look at it in context of what their efforts were with the Galaxy camera. And where are they going with it? Because we had the Galaxy camera and we were like, whoa, where'd this come from? Okay, guys, we know you made a little cameras, in the, but, but now you're making a big deal out of this. And now yeah. with this NX and it's and, you know, at the event, they kept showing close ups of Samsung lens and they, they yeah. really want to trend. You know, they're positioning themselves to. Not oh, just, yeah. well, they've already broken into the camera segment, but they're positioning themselves to try to dominate it in yeah, the I'm consumer get, I'm space. getting there. I'm getting there. Hold Are on. You? Really? Making, oh, yeah, I'm getting there eventually. Good. It's good because we, like, <laughs> we have like four hours for this podcast, so it's good. Yeah, take, we do. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it appeals to people in our industry because we need great camera quality and connectivity. But the other people that it appeals to is like, like four people, people who want... That LTE connectivity, nobody really cares that this camera has Android on it. Nobody. I, I, if, if I had my in, uh, NEX 5N with LTE, I would be completely happy. But I don't. So really, this only appeals to somebody who wants to take a camera out, shoot images, and share them immediately. Hmm. But that's it. Who's going to want to do that? That's not the point, though. This point is they're upping the ante in, in the camera space. Not to pros. Pros don't care. But they're putting Android on things that we never thought was possible with Android. Refrigerators. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think the next? Washing machines. They're putting TouchWiz on every one of their products. Are they going to make a TV with TouchWiz? Like, I, yeah. I hope not. But LG is making WebOS TVs, so why not? Um, but they are? yeah, they're going. Yeah, <laughs> yes. gonna... When? That's why they bought uh, rights to, to WebOS. Yeah, oh, yeah right. It. Yeah. It's not going to happen. But, um, Stupid. But yeah, it, what they're doing is saying. Hey, we can do this. We've always thought Android is pretty eh, with camera quality, because the Galaxy camera really only you know solidified that in yeah. that it really wasn't that great. Right. So uh, where, where are we going ultimately with this? Can we, uh, how do, how do we get out of point. good? How do we get out of this camera discussion? I'm sorry, I brought it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, it's uh, not going to be a big seller. Boom, yeah. Boom, good. Next. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The Galaxy NX. Interesting product. It doesn't appeal to anyone. There. That's yeah. the moral of the story. <laughs> now, what, I have one question. What does NX mean? That is know. a good question. So yeah. I figured that they wanted to steal Naval from the experiment. branding from Sony for NEX. Uh, like, we're just going to oh, drop the E. Damn. Oh, I have no idea. That was just a. I just pulled that out of my rear end. Wow. <laughs> Can you stop pulling things out of your butt? Uh, is a list of di- is it, what does NCC and NX mean? Yeah, so if you look up what does NX mean, you get a lot of Star Trek links for uh, for for hilarious reasons. So whenever there's an NX product with a specific number after it, I'm like, oh hey, my Star Trek brain is going weird. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's probably a Sony emulation thing, like you suggest. We talked about the Samsung Galaxy Mega. I'm ready to jump platforms, guys. Unless you want to talk about anything else from Samsung, because I'm so burned out on talking Samsung. <sighs> that is a sound of exhaustion. Yeah, that was there was a lot of stuff yesterday, and you know, uh, I think it was all covered pretty well. Tony did a really good job, and Samsung brought out some cool products. They just, I just wish they wouldn't try so hard at their actual events because it's so hilarious. And I wish they would just go back to their their branding from before, where a Galaxy S4 is a Galaxy S4, and anything that's not is not a Galaxy S4. Yeah, yeah. they need to go back to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, can we briefly touch on this iPhone 5S? Speaking nope. of things called S? Nope. Is this legit? Went... Do we think this nope. is legit? No? Nope. No? Yes. I have yes. no idea. Yes. I, yes. I couldn't even look at it. <laughs> so, it's interesting because when I saw this posted, yeah, I, 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 Brandon, what, I mean, this is from Mac Rumors and from Engadget, via Engadget from Mac Rumors. So, it's got a, a taller LED flash. Yep, that seems reasonable. I mean, I think it's going to have a, a higher resolution camera and it's bigger battery and faster processor. It's going to look exactly the same except for the back, and it's going to have iOS seven, and that's that. It's you know, it's 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 an it's an in between. Yeah, it's that, the, the iPhone six is the one to get. Well, maybe actually the eight I think is I hear is going to be good. Yeah, that's what I heard. I, sources say sources say you're right. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I think it was interesting because we normally don't post uh, iPhone leaks, but that's because not a lot of them are terribly reliable. Usually they're renders or whatever, but this one looks like it could be legit. And Was this one left in a bar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. They found <laughs> now, this the one funny thing a, is that guy was a uh, NC State grad. Is that right? My friend knew him. Yeah, my friend that I worked with for several years knew the guy. Guys? <laughs> I just got a just got an awesome thing on my BlackBerry Hub. So BlackBerry Hub, uh, you know, aggregates all your notifications. I just got my first bit of spam on BlackBerry Hub, and I'm not talking about email spam. The Skype app just spammed me in the BlackBerry Hub. Oh nice. my goodness! Skype offer for your BlackBerry 10. You no. can already call Skype to Skype for free. Terms and conditions apply. This message was sent by or on behalf no. of BlackBerry. I'm glad that Microsoft bought Skype, but at the same time, Skype. I used to enjoy enjoy Skype when there weren't advertisements in my freaking chat window. Yeah, yeah. this that's or when you go to share your screen, it's like you must upgrade to share your screen or continue without upgrading. So. Or continue sharing your screen without upgrading. It's like, what? Yeah. Every time I get on a call with Jaime, he's like, I've got to upgrade. I already have a premium. I don't need to upgrade. I'm like, I, I don't know, but I can click right through this and, and, and share my screen. He's like, I don't know. This is ridiculous. Every time <laughs> every I jump time. back into using Skype, it's, it's, it's some software update has happened. And every time they update Skype, they've got to change the UI. Like, they've got to move the buttons around. They gotta, it, it's amazing. The, using Skype after an upgrade is like visiting the cereal aisle in your grocery store after a week. Just everything's been changed around. Uh, <laughs> how long until they put Metro UI on it? I wish they would because those buttons are so small and oh. bubbly and stupid. Anyway, let's talk about Microsoft a little bit because Microsoft apparently tried to make a little bit of a purchase recently, but they weren't able to do it. What do we think about that? I'd Anybody? like to see Huawei purchase them, but hey, that's just me. We're talking about Nokia. If anybody Denny's. Had any. oh. oh, yeah. No. It's, yeah, it's, it's like IHOP buying Applebee's. It just makes no sense, but it still happened. <laughs> Uh, this is this was kind of amazing to me because we had been speculating about it uh, podcast after podcast. Is, is you know is Microsoft going to buy Nokia at some point if things get bad enough? But we didn't have any concrete info, and I think this was from the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, uh, apparently there, there were negotiations that were happening over the past couple months discussing the deal, but uh, everything fell through. It, rumored rumors say because Nokia was asking for too much money. And it seems as if Microsoft walked away from the You're table. You're a sinking ship. You're not worth twenty billion dollars. <laughs> Man, I see. Uh, it's so hard, though. It, it, when you look at all the metrics, I don't know if it's fair to call them a sinking ship anymore. I feel like they've stemmed a lot of the bleeding. Uh, I feel like they're at least not okay. sinking any lower. They're, they might be they, sitting pretty low in the water. They put know. a, a band aid on a, a thirty stitch gap. Hmm. So. Well, and then you make a good <laughs> point about spleen. you made a good point about Huawei though. Now, and then Huawei apparently came calling when they <laughs> when, yeah. when deals were happening, and uh, I think I read somewhere else that Huawei was concerned about investing in Nokia because they considered Windows Phone quote weak, which was <laughs> uh, an interesting quote to see in a headline. I didn't even bother going to the comments. It seems pretty pretty blunt. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Now, Brandon, what's your what are your what are your thoughts on this? I I'm just curious as to, do you think it would have been a good idea for Microsoft to buy Nokia? I well, I I'm kind of curious why the talks fell apart, and the only reason that I can think of the talks fall apart is because of disagreement, and usually it's about price. So my guess is that Nokia wanted a ton, like a ton. And Microsoft just didn't think it was worth it because they. I mean, Microsoft has already sunk in so much money into Windows Phone, and it really hasn't paid off yet. And their investors are not going to be happy if they pay like, what's the the market cap of Nokia? Anyone know? Mm, I don't, don't know. know. Don't Let's know. figure that out. Are they a public company? I think so. At NOK. Uh, Nokia yep. Corporation is trading at Jesus, trading at three dollars and eighty six cents right now. So 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 <laughs> the, so the market cap is fifteen billion. So they'd have to pay probably a slight premium to that. They wouldn't have to pay all cash. Uh, they could use some stock, so they'd have to probably pay like half of that in cash, like seventy. I mean, that would be a mega acquisition, and yeah, um, I think they need to buy Nokia so that they can help drive more of their their direction. And and um, so, but th that's my question. You know, why would they? Why would they have to buy Nokia? Nokia is already in their pocket. Nokia already builds only Windows phones, basically, except for the Asha stuff. Uh, so why bother investing in, in in buying the company if they've already got from Nokia what they need? To do exactly what they want with the company. 
to have their way with them. Right, but uh, what <laughs> could what could they what could Microsoft do better? Microsoft, who can't really sell the Surface, who uh, or the Surface Pro is doing okay, but who can't really sell the Surface RT, who's new to hardware. What could Microsoft do better than Nokia that, that Nokia is not doing well right now? I don't you know, understand. In, in, in like three months from now, we're going to be able to answer this question a lot better because the same question could be asked about Google buying Motorola, and we don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, the patents. Y- yeah, that actually that that might be the answer there. Nokia has so many patents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, no, but no, Microsoft's not really Microsoft's not really getting attacked with patents. So I don't know. And well, not because they're not money. making a huge handset hardware play right now. We haven't seen yeah. a Surface phone out of them yet. We've seen a yeah, tablet, but, but... But Microsoft hasn't really sunk in a lot of money into Windows Phone because they're getting just as much back from, from Android. Yeah, so, they're getting more from Android. Than they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th- that's, that was a point I made in an article a long time ago, is that Microsoft could do this as long as Android is around. So if Microsoft lives at 1%, 2% market share for the rest of, of Windows Phone's life, then it doesn't matter because they've already made all their money through Android. So they could try and try and try and throw money around all they want because they're getting money for nothing. At because the, some, yeah, at the some moment. Some crazy, yeah, for now. Yeah, for now. Uh, I, but, I, I don't know. I, it, you know, I just think it's interesting. I, I like thinking about what's, what's happening with Nokia. But, you know, and this is something I... That makes me a little sad. It seems like, and this is some, uh, coming from somebody who's not a business, who was never a business student, and you know, who was never really in in business at a deciding fact, a deciding level. But it seems that whenever there are talks about a merger or a buyout, the actual event of the merger or buyout is really not that far away. Even if it's stuff like this, where it's like talks broke down, it's like, well, then somebody else is going to be talking to them real soon if they're not already. So, Google's going to swoop in and buy them. That, oh would, be God, that would be absolutely ridiculous. hilarious. I, I don't I think that would be legal, <laughs> even. I, <laughs> uh, that would be hilarious. But what if, I, I so think, I, uh, is, is Huawei, if Huawei were to buy Nokia, would that be the worst case scenario? Uh, Why do I feel like that would be horrible for Nokia? We'd never see Nokia again. They would market. Low-end prepaid phones on. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> Straight talk. That's that. That would be like dating a really hot chick and then putting a bag over her head when you took her out in public. <laughs> <laughs> I love your analogies. You. Thank you for, for going that route. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I just. Huawei has been trying so hard to get into the U.S. market. Nokia has a presence in the U.S. market. I can understand why they would be interested. But the fact that they are quoted as saying, I, I, I'm sorry I can't source this, so maybe it's not accurate. The fact that they may have been quoted as saying that Windows, they find Windows Phone weak, well, then you're kind of missing the point, Huawei. You're gonna, what, are you going to buy Nokia and then use them to make Android hardware like so many, like, you know, 14 million fanboys want? No. Well, Huawei calls Windows Don't Phone weak because they can't do the exact same thing they do with Android with Windows Phone. They can't build a $20 phone to sell on Straight Talk or some prepaid carrier here in the States and... and yeah, well, they build okay Market phones it. for overseas. They, but they, yeah, and, and, and overseas, lines, yeah, but but they're not getting that same traction that you, they are with with Android phones. That's why they call it weak. They don't they don't make compelling hardware to to sell a very standardized standardized software. That that's the thing with Windows Phone. You can't just slap Windows Phone on any old hardware and it sell. You have to do something compelling with the hardware. And that's that's something Huawei is not particularly awesome at. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh, I just found my favorite headline uh, of the day uh, from Network World. It's a Windows Phone weak. Huawei sneers. <laughs> Windows phones are weak, but still require a license fee. Says Richard Yu, CEO of Huawei's consumer division, according to an interview in the Financial Times. That's not good. Android is free. Apparently, wow. he was speaking before the launch today of a new Huawei smartphone, or the other day, the SNP6, yeah. Yeah, uh, 10 years ago, not even that, in 2000, so 13 years ago, Nokia's market cap was just shy of $250 billion. Wow. Jeez, oh my God. Yeah. Wow. That, that is sense. crazy. That ish is crazy. And they're not a sinking ship? <laughs> 
they're like 10 percent not even that of what they were yeah of what they were I, I just took issue with your verb like it's like if you're if you're low in the water and you're you've been mostly dead then yeah but if you're sinking it says to me that you're actually actively still dying harder like you know I, I feel like they were plummeting to the bottom of the grand canyon and they they were they landed on a on a pterodactyl but the pterodactyl, oh, pterodactyl is now injured on a weak branch. That's, yeah, yeah, but you know they're still not falling as as quickly. They're, they're, they're holding on. They're not dying as quickly, I think. So uh, maybe this EOS will help to you know uh, aid in that recovery. And we saw that maybe the international version was possibly revealed by this leak of this Nokia RM eight seventy five. I didn't crush your segue. That makes me sad. That so was nice. a good segue. Wasn't I, that a good I, one? I, as it was happening, I wanted to hit a bell and. <laughs> and, and, and mark the occasion. Hey, uh, d- 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 I don't know uh, this EOS thing. Yeah. I, I know, I know, it makes Tony feel unnaturally towards a mobile device. And yeah, it makes it gets me a little gets, it gets me a little ex- excited as well. I get beads of sweat on my forehead. Okay. Wow. That's good. Um, nice. But like, I, I, I kind of, I kind of, I, I kind of don't get it. I've never actually um, used a pure view, and uh, you know I've seen some sample images, and I think a lot of other people aren't going to get it. But I think what's going to get people is the forty-one megapixel thing. That's exactly right. It's going to be such a headline, and people are going to like. It, it's kind of like. It's it's kind of like going to a cell phone store and getting a phone with a ten-inch screen. I mean, just that alone is enough to get you to pay attention to it. I need more mega pickles. Yeah, right. And this is what oh, caught. Pickles. I st- you know what's, <laughs> you know what's funny. I still remember the morning Delpins. I woke up and rolled over and read the news. And Tony was at MWC, and our first headline, our biggest headline of the day, uh, this is MWC 2012, was Nokia like something. Nokia wows crowd with 41 megapixel camera. And I had to look at it three times to make sure I wasn't missing a decimal point. And I almost emailed you, Brandon. I was like, Tony made a. It's a 4.1, right? Can you re- can you remind me what what that actually means? Because it's not literally forty one megapixels. No, I, I will. Taylor will be able to describe it in in detail first. But but here's the thing. I will? Bef- probably. Oh no. I, well, here's, there's pixel doubling and, and and stuff that goes on. But the point is, none of that matters because as much as I like to say, and as much as we all like to believe that specs don't matter, they still matter if you advertise them properly. And yes. being able to to advertise and truthfully. A 41 megapixel sensor is it, 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 nobody else can match that. And you know, I was standing in line with my HTC One when it was brand new, the review unit, and some guy asked me, "He's like, what's that?" I'm like, "Oh, that's the HTC One." And he's like, "Oh, how many megapixels it got?" Like that what? was the second question the guy asked me. What a jerk! Right, but this is what people do. They 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 want to know. It doesn't and- have. It doesn't have megapixels. It has ultra pixels. Right, and I didn't even bother trying to explain. I'm like, it's just four, <laughs> but it's it's a good camera. Uh, but this is the thing. Imagine if you told somebody that same guy. Imagine if I was like 41. He's like, are you serious? That gets conversation going. That gets buzz. And it, it, when you can back that up with excellent performance, like all the Lumia devices can, uh, that's that's a game changer. That's why it's yeah. so exciting to me personally. Yeah, my my grandpa obsessed over megapixels and, and cameras. Um, he didn't care about anything else, just just megapixels. <laughs> and every time I would come to his house with a new phone, he'd be, how many megapixels it has? It's, how many megapixels? Well, every first time. first of all, you should correct your, your grandfather, Tom, that they're not megapixels. They're no, me- megapixels. Never, never correct. But it's, never it's funny you mention that, Taylor, because I've had that happen. Like, my, my, my parents or something. No, no, my dad. He, um, he got... His his um his girlfriend got him a DSLR camera, and which I thought was crazy because he has an iPhone five that should be good enough. He's never going to figure out how to use a DSLR. It's bulky for the things he takes pictures with. He's going to forget it, and it's going to be a waste of money. But the one thing he knew about it was how many megapixels it had, and it, it really right. surprised me that people still are thinking about that. And, yeah. and because I had people, a- the regular consumer space lags behind. Uh, the tech press and the and the the actual state of things yeah. because people want to know, want to be able to classify cameras. They want to be there's so many smartphones out there. It's like what do you got? The Galaxy? Oh, I got the Droid. Oh, I got the iPhone. Oh, how many megapixels you got? You know, it's like it's it's now that. You're saying megapixels. Now I'm saying megapixels. <laughs> but it's it's that thing where people are like, oh, what do you mean megapixels? And people like to be able to educate each other in the regular consumer space. And it's like, oh, well, a mega the more megapixels you got, the better it is. And regardless of how wrong that is. Millions upon millions of people believe that is the case. Yeah. So that's why this a, is important. 
I had a, I have a photography. F- wow. <clears throat> I have a one. photography friend. <laughs> Try again. Try again. <laughs> I have a friend who's a professional photographer, <laughs> and she took pictures. She is a she is a wonderful photographer. She is awesome. I love her pictures. And um, one of her clients came up to her after the shoot and was looking at the the pictures, and she said, "You need to buy some more mega pencils to put in your camera." <laughs> Did she say mega pencils? <laughs> mega pencils. <laughs> and she said she just about fell out on the floor and told the woman to just leave. <laughs> she, <laughs> mega pencils. You yes. gotta buy some more mega pencils. <laughs> So every time I see her and she's talking about cameras and stuff, I'm like, how many mega pencils I have? And she looks back at me and always says mega pickles. And, uh, yeah. So my grandpa would always ask me that, uh, how many mega pickles it have after he would ask me if I still work at the internets. You still work at those internets? Yeah, you work uh, at the internet still. Uh, some, sometimes, Love miss that man. Sometimes Michael emails me and he says, can I have more interwebs? And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I can, I do not provide the interwebs. I need more. I need more interwebs. Um, hey, sometimes, sometimes you, Brandon oh, sends me emails that are completely like, oh yeah, oh that was funny. I can't decode them. I can't decode them. I don't like, know what. Boy, to like what? Can you, the one can, I sent you, you yesterday, Taylor? Can you? Can you please? <laughs> <laughs> I sent it to Michael. I'm like, do you? Can you understand this? What one? did it say? Hold on, I'll read it. <laughs> It was the most That's funny hilarious. exchange ever because I'm in the middle of writing uh, a TVQ stuff, and then Taylor's like, "Can you decode this Brandon email?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, I said um, Samsung pieces with the subject. I said, "Got anything yet?" And then I gave you two suggestions: you know, something about an Android-powered DSLR with LTE, something about how Samsung is ruining the Galaxy brand. And your response—that was my email. Your response was, "Looks like two things: one Android." <laughs> <laughs> and my response back to that was, uh, what? <laughs> I have no idea what you meant by that. I, 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 was, I was trying to say, uh, I, I was trying to say that the, you know, not, not that many things were announced, but one is Android. That, and, and so, and so that you should expect an email and, in, 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 uh, figuring out what we're going to write about. Next. See, you just got to, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. you just mm-hmm. got to fill in the gaps. It's that easy. It's that easy. Yep. It was a oh, six word email. Funny. I had to fill in like 40 words. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I'd laughed about that for quite some time. <laughs> Did you guys know, Stephen just put up an article, because a friend sent me an email with this, that HTC is an offer. If you type in your serial number on an HTC website, you get 25 bucks in Google Play credit. You're kidding yeah. me. I didn't know about that. I wonder if I can do that with my uh, international one. Yes, you can. Yes. Go, to, wow. go to pocketnow.com. So, yeah, the deal, the if you bought an HTC One starting on June 14th, you could be eligible for receiving a free $25 Google Play credit. That is awesome. And you, sorry, you try all it? you international Pocket Now readers, this deal is strictly for one handset sold and activated in the U.S. We know. Lame. Hmm. That's too bad. Starting on June 14th. You had this way before June 14th. So it doesn't work. Mm. Stephen's so honest. Mm. He tells it like it is. We like that in our news in our news team. News team. All right. We, uh, Anchorman Two is coming out. That's going to be great. Let's. Yeah, win. I want to see it so bad. I want to see it badly. Eight, as well. eight minutes left. So let's make these eight also, minutes count. We could, we're going. Yeah, we're going to talk about Ron, have- Ron Burgundy. Uh, don't we have Ron what? Burgundy? Don't we have listener mail? Is that what you were going to ask? Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. I said wait. we only have two subjects left. Do you know okay. Ron? Who's the 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 the, the, the adult uh, film uh, Ron? Oh, Ron Jeremy. Jeremy. Yes, I met him. It was kind of funny. Um, you didn't shake his hand. Did you? I was just going to ask you. Yeah, it's important to shake a hand. I, Ron I, Jeremy probably washes his hands. I would. I would bump his elbow. <laughs> we could bump elbows. I, Wait, when I, did you meet him, Brandon? I was in Las Vegas for my bachelor party, and I I really yeah. do not remember much about it, except that we happened to be in town the same time that the adult film convention or something was in town. And so, like, he, here's a bunch of, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, 25 year old guys um you know away from their girlfriends and wives and 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 like just like a cab ride away is this porn convention <laughs> it's a week is, after ces wasn't it uh the abn adult entertainment expo is what it uh, no it was not it wasn't oh, near ces oh. actually it was a different time of the year it was a different kind of it was a different thing. It, the, the thing you're talking about, Taylor, I think is like the movie expo or something. But this was yeah. just like a general adult thing. And and we walk in and there he was with his mustache. And um, <laughs> if, if this was a video podcast, I'd pull up a picture on my phone because we got some pictures with him. But wow. um, 
Wow. Anyway, this is totally inappropriate. Can you know what? No, you know what? we are going to move on. But I found it very fascinating. To uh, by the way, I, if you read any uh, autobiographies or biographies of people in the adult film industry, it is wow. I mean, it's like really depressing reading, but it is also fascinating. And when I was in the middle of of, of reading some story about some suicide or something really really sad stuff, uh, it, it, they mentioned CES. And I was like, wait, what are you guys talking about? And I didn't know that for years the adult, the adult film expo coincided with CD, CES in Las Vegas. Yep, same time. They had to I switch. I had no idea. They had to move the, uh, the movie porn convention, whatever, a week back because they were, it was crushing the infrastructure of, of Las Vegas. <laughs> because the normal population of Las Vegas like, is just like over 200,000. And it quintuples during these things, right? Yeah. yeah. So for CES alone, it triples. Yeah, and then with with the porn convention there, it was like five times the normal population in the city. And just every hotel it, right? was every hotel was booked. Every cab was taken. I mean, there was just literally there's a line the, out the door of the In and Out Burger. Yeah, the the train was completely packed twenty four seven. They you know there was just like this can't happen. We can't do this anymore. Yeah. So they moved it a week back, and there were a lot of people that. Uh, they didn't, went to CES like who were right? upset. They were like, what? No. <laughs> what do I do when the show floor closes? All those outlets that cover tech news and adult film news. All those, yeah. all those dual, dual mode outlets. Hey, the Nokia Lumia 925 got a review. You should check that out. And uh, Tony did that. And you know what? I've been watching the metrics as compared to the BlackBerry Q10 review. And do you guys know, without looking at the metrics, listeners, you can have your own little guessing game in here if you want. Do you guys know which device is currently more popular in terms of views on YouTube? Since, since you asked the question, it's probably the unexpected one, which means it's the Q10. Isn't that crazy? No. Yeah. It must have be a fluke in the data. It can't possibly be. Well, the no, thing is, it, it, uh, it, I wanted it. Like, I, I saw it before, and I'm like, man. Are you talking about I the Q10? Yeah, because, right, so you know, not, nostalgia not, and stuff. Sure, and I'm not saying the Q10 is, is a bad device. I mean, if you read my review, you can tell that I'm not saying it's a bad device. But the, the thing is, y- people were asking us. People were banging down our door in the comments like, got a 925 yet? Do you have a Lumia 925? Do a review of the 925. Can you do a comparison to the 925? Like, it was this amazing maelstrom. And you know how many people were asking for the Q10 review? None. Like, nobody – people still don't come to us for BlackBerry News first because we, we're still new to covering BlackBerry, which I guess is the thing. But it's just stunning to me that the BlackBerry Q10 is outperforming the Lumia 925 uh, on, our, on our metrics, and it's, it's interesting. But Globally, it might be a little different. <clears throat> Globally, the, the uh, it might be SEO, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> It could be. It could well be. I don't know. But in any case, both those reviews were up alongside your Mega One. We had a, a heck of a week in reviews. Which was cool. Mega. Mega. And uh, so it's nice. Uh, Taylor and I have both been using the Q10. We've been looping Jaime in to BBM chats because Jaime has my old Z10. And, and Hayato. And Hayato, yes. Uh, El Gato. Is El that what you guys just said? No, we like the El Gato, though. That's a fun device. But also does Hayato, it, does, yes. Does it really? Uh, my, my El Gato is, is useless. Does it really what, Brandon? Oh, never mind. <laughs> so you just got to power through when Taylor interrupts. You just got to keep talking. Yeah, the, I was told, <laughs> when I started on this podcast, I was told, if in doubt or when in doubt, just Still interrupt. space. That's right, because we hate dead space, and that's why. I hate, I yeah. hate interrupting people, and now I'm just like, I oh, just do it all the time. <laughs> we well, created like, a monster. In, in, the last, in the last three minutes I can be here, I want to go back to something that we were talking about. We were talking about pickles, and I was wondering if you guys <laughs> like the sweet gherkins, you know, the, the, you know, the smaller ones, or if you like the ones that are more classic vinegary pickles. I hate um, pickles. Dill so pickles hard. are delicious. Um, what are they? Sweet. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's like an olive pickle or something. I can't remember what it is. Um, grape leaf. Grape leaf pickles. The Those. Heck? Can you send me a jar, Taylor? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, my grandma cans them, so yeah, I can send you a jar. Really? Uh, yeah. I would love uh, some homemade pickles from your grandmother. Yeah, they. she makes them out of the uh, the cucumbers in her garden. Um, but yes, grape leaf pickles are, are not that great. I don't like sweet pickles, but, but dill pickles, the vinegary ones, are... Delicious. If we were doing a video podcast, you would see me. You would see me like bashing my head against the foam in my booth because it's really, really nice to do in here when you guys talk about pickles. I hate pickles, so I'm, I just have nothing to contribute. I'm sorry. I'm afraid. But you're you not American, pickles. boy. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just don't like uh, crispy, briny things in in green liquid. Not my huh. thing. Uh, Brandon, are you getting any new device re- soon for yourself? Because you, you people, you know, I still get the occasional, where's Brandon Miniman in my comments? 
Well, I, every video I post, I get, where's Joe Levi and where's Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't people be satisfied with who's there at the moment? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. People it never matters. There's always, they don't like you know, me like they like Joe. No, they're starting to like you a lot better. See, I told you, it's just because you were new. And then now now people like you better. Oh, people like me. But they do get upset in this podcast, um, like in, in the, the posts like, and stuff, if, if I don't interrupt people. If, if you, I don't crush segues and don't interrupt people, no, they're like, they get upset when you do. Taylor? And then I'm like, I already did it. Uh, yeah, no, but Brandon, are you getting a sweet, sweet new toy soon? Am, am I? I don't know. You I, tell me, bro. Well, is, if we were going to get, so listeners, you get to, this is the last point we'll make before Brandon has to go. You get to see, you take a peek behind the curtain, because we were going to get the NEC Terrain, but then we kind of looked at it, and we looked at the other devices that were coming in, and we were like, you know what, we don't have time to, to do this right now. That was the decision, right, Brandon? Yes, yes. Is there- yeah. So the NEC Terrain is the first NEC device to hit American shores in a very long time, um, but it's also – it's ruggedized, which is the only cool thing about it really. It's an Android device with a physical QWERTY, and it looks like – in the words of Adam Lane when I asked him because he saw it last night, he was like, it looks like an old Windows mobile device that might still need a stylus. It doesn't feel yeah. that great in the hand. Like, yeah. I was like, okay. 640 by 480 resolution? Yeah. Uh, Brandon would love that. <laughs> yeah. My eyes, they're burning. <laughs> Mike, what yeah. were you refer? I mean, what was the point in bringing that up? The question was, it was not a rhetorical question. I, I'm not sending you a surprise device or anything like that. But oh. I, I, it's just that um, we, we do get people occasionally asking uh, if they could see you more often on the tubes. And now with Pocket Now Live taking the summer off, off. I just wondered if we would see your face uh, showing yeah. us a device. So, I can send you my ooya. I think you people are, are uh, missing my, my squinty brown eyes and my <laughs> uh, <I have> choice. <laughs> well, uh, when, when, the wind, when the wind blows and there's something amazing to be reviewed, I will review it. However, uh, a lot of the time in the next few weeks, I will probably be changing poopy diapers. So. That's right. That's yes. right. I can't wait. I, I'm going to send you a cigar. I can't wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna road trip up there and and say hello, That's and I'll let you test drive my car. So that'll be your short vacation. I do want to test drive your car. So I, <laughs> every time you post a picture on Facebook, I get I get uh, very excited. Mm, you need a little sweat beads yeah. on the brow. Love it. I, I I finally got rid of my 30 day tags, which is so nice. Mm. But uh, so 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 so. Uh, are you are you happy with the color choice? Ta- Taylor got a a, 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 oh, yes. a Scion. What are the letters? FRS. FRS. It FRS. stands for Front Engine Rear Wheel Drive Sports Car. My goodness, I can't believe they made a rear wheel drive car. That's amazing. So, so are, are you enjoying the color? That it's like an yeah, RG brown, I love it. burnt, nice. No, it's not actually a burnt orange. It's like a bright. Just it when the sun shines on it, it looks like it's on fire. It's just Ooh. really, really bright. And if the it's like an overcast day, it's a burnt orange. So it's it's metallic. It's really cool. I like it a lot. That I, is awesome. That's yeah, a, and, and I get a lot of questions about it. Like yeah. somebody asked me the other day, they didn't see the front of it. They saw the top and they looked at me and they were like, is that a Ferrari? I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's a Scion. It's not that expensive. And someone, I get a lot of questions asking if it's a, a three, the 370, like a new 370 or even like an older model, um, 270, two, whatever that number right, is. Right, 270Z. Yeah. So I get a lot of questions. Nobody really knows what it is. And uh, I drove back home for Father's Day, and there are none of them up there. Yeah. None. They're, it, I mean, they're so rare right now. It's unbelievable. Th- there, are, there are a lot of them in, in Charlotte. I see them probably two or three times a week. But back home, I drove around. I drove 200 miles back home. I saw nothing. You know, Nobody had ever seen one before. I went to a Lotus lot. And the, the salesman walked up to me. He's like, you could have had a Lotus. And he was explaining the price and everything. I said, you're a little bit out of my price range. I don't have $68,000 to put down on a car. And uh, he's like, yeah, but it's all about the satisfaction of having a hand-built car and it being, you know, rare. There are only 600 of them in the States every year. Or uh, in the uh, every year. And yeah. then he looked over at my car and he's like, come to think of it, I've never even seen one of these. You have a nice car, sir. <laughs> I was like, Sweet. thank you. Are you going to quit trying to sell me a Lotus now? <laughs> Sweet, but yeah, it was. Uh, hey, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, Hayato makes a good point in a recent tweet. He says, "My biggest is dis- sorry, total nonsense." <laughs> so, my the Take biggest two. disappointment with the BlackBerry Q10 is that dual wielding with another smartphone is an absolute must. Zero app selection. Yep. 
Womp, That's womp, the problem. Womp, and and porting womp. apps from Android just isn't that great. Yeah, but it's a it, terrible experience, and the apps after you get them on there are pretty bad. New excitement though: Android four point two apps are going to be supported in BlackBerry runtime. It, it already supported in beta. Very before cool. the before the tide carries carries me away, I, I do have to uh, jump off now, gentlemen. But uh, all right, brother. Good to have Goodbye. you on the Goodbye. show, sir. Keep it clean. Don't forget the mouthwash. Goodbye. <laughs> What's that? We should go. We should go. You want you want to answer you want to answer a piece of listener mail or two? We can do one or two. Yeah. All right. Let me. Let's do that. Let's do that. We we weren't going to do it, but you know what? We're already over time, and I feel like we owe people stuff after talking about uh, porn stars, and mega pencils, and cars for and for, pickles for too long. Yeah, and pickles. Uh, Hello, governor. <laughs> st- I, oh my god! Uh, I had to do it. I had to do it. So so bad. You're Michael, not making a timestamp to edit that out, are you? No, I'm actually just going getting into the uh, listener mail. All right, good. Podcast. I would have been sad. All right, here we go. Listener mail. We haven't pre-screened these, so this will be fun. And Taylor has no idea which ones we're going to do. So I can't even read them. So, uh, hey, cool. David Bullock. Had interesting. Interesting. So this came in seven days ago, uh, well before Samsung's Ative Q, but it almost directly addressed it. This is from David Bullock. Hi. I've been thinking about how Windows 8 has opened the floodgates for tons of tablet-laptop crossovers have been coming into the Ultrabook space. How, excuse me. However, none have really taken off in terms of sales. I personally don't think that any OEM has got the whole concept right as of yet. I also think that there's a lot of potential in the market for a tablet-laptop crossover at around the $500 to $900 price point. I think this is a perfect opportunity for Apple or someone else to step in and follow that concept, but get it right. Have everything work just right in a way that isn't at all uncomfortable for the user. Maybe even with Wacom stylus support. Uh, I think there's S-Pen. huge money that could be made if there was done properly. Yeah, exactly, yes, but David Bullock, now, you should go into a, a different line of business. I don't know what you do, <laughs> but you should be a fortune teller in Salem, Massachusetts or somewhere else. That's really cool. Um, way to email us seven days before a big a, a big device that meets some of these um, requirements. And of course, most we, of them. The only yeah. thing that's in question really is the price. Exactly, and that's if, and if it's at nine hundred dollars, I will be there on launch day to pick it up. Yeah, if it's as low as nine hundred dollars, that would be pretty pretty amazing. Um, but yes, the only thing I'm worried about is if the S Pen works like it does on the Note 2, where it shuts off capacitive input when you're type or typing when you're trying when you're using the S Pen, because that's one of the biggest problems with an S Pen. If it doesn't, you're going to write with your hand still. So I imagine they would. But what, if palm, is, are you talking about palm rejection or what? It, it's called palm rejection, but what it does is it switches to inductive input only. Instead of uh, capacitive and inductive. Oh yeah, right, right, right. So, so there, there might have been some complications with the the screen resolution or, or you know, the display type or whatever. Because, yeah, they, I don't think they've gone back on that. But if they do, that will completely ruin it for me. Yeah. So, David, I mean, this is a really good point. I, I think that was it a question? It, it was a question. It was, it okay. was, it was, it was basically a question about um, Jesus. I'm sorry, I just got distracted. Brandon just sent me a Gizmodo article on some kind of woven graphite bathtub. I don't know what, what's going on. But I love Brandon. Brandon has a hard stop so that he can go and, and, and look at design articles about soda cans. Um, no, the, the question was basically what are our thoughts about, you know, about David's thoughts, which are that, hey, the convertible space is an intriguing one and nobody's really done it right yet. Uh, why do we think they aren't, aren't taking off? You know, and... Uh, I, I I hope the Ative Q does. And, and I really I, do because I, it is it would be the first Windows tablet that's really just hit the nail on the head. I think right, but but it's also I have no confidence that it will. I I recall oh, no. being so so very taken with the HP Envy X2 at IFA before it was released, and now that I have one, I'm like, wow, this thing just is just a basket of compromises, and it's horrible. So yeah. well, I, this one doesn't seem to be. I mean, it's got the same. It's got a Haswell processor. No, no, no. no. Um, On the spec sheet, you're right. It doesn't. But yeah. the I don't think the user experience is going to be. Not only do I not think it's going to be for everybody. I don't think it's going to be for many people. It's I, Windows eight. It's, Windows eight isn't for many people. No, it's Windows eight and Android. So while it offers, listen, for geeks like us, and this is why I wrote that piece yesterday. For tablet nerds, it's the epitome of an amazing device, and we all want it. For the regular consumer. I, you know, so many. This is why so many people buy iPads. This is why so many people buy devices that are you know because they're simple and they're relatively cheap. Uh, the 
convertible market is inherently more complex because it is they are physically more involved devices. They have more it, components. And it requires the user to be able to switch contexts yes, on the fly. Exactly. To be able to switch between the Android experience and the Windows experience. And the touchscreen uh, experience simultaneously. And the experience as well, which is another thing that Windows... I don't think people have really gotten over this gorilla arm thing with Windows 8. Uh, huh? Gorilla arm? Yeah, look it up. It's a... It, it was a problem they ran into in the 80s when touchscreens first became sort of semi-popular. People's arms got tired because the screen was positioned like a computer screen. Oh, and yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're like reaching your arm up, and it's not a very fun user experience. But I've never heard it referred to as that. But you could lean the screen back. Like you can flip the keyboard underneath, or the, the keyboard's facing back, and you flip the screen over, and it acts as a stand. But yeah, you can lay it right, back in. So that won't blow what, are you, what are you doing? Are you, are, you like, are you typing and then getting up and walking around to see the screen and then walking back around to type some more? Like, what? I don't understand how, that, how the hinge oh. helps in this context because it doesn't. It really no, doesn't. you can flip the computer around if you don't need the keyboard. If you don't need the keyboard, yeah. But well, weren't we just talking about needing the keyboard? <sighs> right. I don't know. This is, well, uh, this is the screen. core of the problem with convertibles, right? Because they're inherently more complex. And that's what people don't like. That's what regular consumers don't like. I have ver- heard very few negative, um, I guess, complaints instead of negative, just complaints about the yoga. Um, switching from using the keyboard to just a tablet. Listen, you can do what you want with your physical fitness, but we're talking about computers. Hey. <laughs> hey now. David, uh, it's an interesting point. I think it's a complicated question. And um, uh, thank you for, you know, uh, have a look at that at Q. And if you have some further thoughts on this, uh, write in again and we'll, uh, we'll catch back up with you. Because, you know, I don't think the Ativ Q is going to change the market, but it's certainly one of the more intriguing devices in this category. And let us know if you want to buy one. Thanks for the, thanks for the mail. Let's, uh, let's keep having, having a look here. Also, um, just to say, I, I was born with gorilla arms, so I don't know if this <laughs> um, I don't know if this really affects my my take on on touch screens. So I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna give you that, and and you take it for what it's worth. Um, I was born with gorilla arms and tree trunk legs, so that's nice. That's that's good. It's good. I uh, I have yeah. a great email here that might be well suited to you, Taylor, because you have one of these devices. Hi, I'm Callian. I'm 14 years old, and I live in Maryland. I've been listening to your podcast for a long time now, and I listen to it while mowing the lawn, and I actually wish it was longer because it is so good. Well, Well, welcome to episode 40. Episode 49, uh, the longest ever episode with the most (laughs) off-topic stuff in the history. Sorry to break our streak. Uh, It was so good. Hey, I have but one humble question for you, says Callion, and it is this. If Google says you don't need expandable SD card storage on smartphones because it's not as effective as just having more built-in internal storage, then why do they offer an 8-gigabyte Nexus 4 in their Google Play Store? It's a very... It's a valid question. If they don't... It seems to me that based on what Google has said about expandable and internal storage, they would actually offer larger storage options like 32 and 64 gigs. Thank you for your time and keep up the great work. Taylor. All All right. There are two answers to this question. The 8 gigabyte Nexus 4 is a bit of a different story because it is a device that is sold at cost or below cost, depending on on what you're looking at. Um, so yes, there is a reason that that device is 8 gigabytes only, um, but they could have made a 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte model and just sold it for a little more. They were trying to hit a certain price point, which is 300 bucks, which is abnormally low for a phone. So that I understand. Does it? Is it a, an excuse for not offering bigger devices no and basically the way i see it is if you do not support micro sd card slots you need to make a minimum storage requirement and it should be no lower than 16 certainly oh god 16 is ideally it should be 32 16 is pushing it and and most people like i don't even use 16 gigabytes when i say that 16 gigabytes is not enough yeah who cares who cares if you don't use 16 gigabytes Jumping up to 32 gigabytes is not that much more expensive on no, a manufacturer side. No, it's on a, the retail side, it's like 50 to 100 dollars, which yeah, is ridiculous. But it costs them like 18 bucks or something like that on the yeah, manufacturer side. It, yeah. It's like, why? Yeah. Why Why are we still uh, the Galaxy Mega? That's one reason I didn't keep it. The one I had had eight gigabytes of built in storage. Which of course, ridiculous. it had a micro SD card slot, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. I can't put my apps on the SD card without rooting it. Yeah. And, um, the, the problem is, 
it had TouchWiz and eight gigabytes of storage, which means the user, like the space available for the user, was yeah. under five gigabytes, which is nuts, and that should never be the case. And and this Ever. is yeah, it's not worth the trade off in in cost because yeah, so, the user experience is so temporary. The good user experience is so temporary because once you download enough apps or get enough media on that thing, you start running out of memory, and then wow, seven months later, you have a useless device. Yeah, and people get this wrong all the time. They say, "Why do you hate micro SD cards?" I don't. I like them. I enjoy them. They're they're useful for when I switch phones or or things, and I need to take the stuff I've downloaded to one phone to another phone. Yeah. The, I I got a SD card in my Note. I put it in my Mega, and there was a lot of stuff already there, like backups for apps and all kinds of stuff. So I just restored restored everything to my phone, and you know I was good. But other than that, like for apps and and stuff I buy from Google Play, my Google Play Music, my Spotify Music, all this stuff. It's useless to have an SD card and very little built-in space. The built-in space needs to be at least, this is 2013, it -hmm. needs to be at least 32 gigabytes. And with 128 gigabyte chips on the way from Samsung, we can hope that the smallest option soon will be 32 gigabytes. Because Samsung is building EEMC NAND 128 gigabyte chips for internal storage. All right, I've I've run out of I've run out of RAM for this memory <laughs> discussion. But thank you very Uh-oh. much for the for the mail, and we're going to move on to the last one. I uh, hope that made your uh, lawn mowing a little bit more enjoyable, <laughs> uh, Kalyan. And Although you may have mowed your lawn like four times over by the time. Yeah, this yeah, definitely. Give give that thing a rest, because man, <laughs> this is the final piece of listener mail, uh, and it is from someone who encourages me just to call him Stephen because he knows I don't I don't really like pronouncing names. That's awesome. Uh, second, the show is awesome. I really like the timing of the podcast as it usually comes out during my two-hour train trip home. So thanks for it. Well, we're gonna get you all the way home on this one. Oh Stephen. yeah, yeah. And uh, my dilemma says Stephen, is related to Google Reader. And this has to be answered by Taylor because I never used it. It'll be shut down in a couple weeks, and I've yet to find a good alternative. I see everyone recommends Feedly, but there's something about it that I don't like. I was thinking of using Google Plus or Twitter as my RSS feed, as nowadays everything is posted in every possible site. What do you guys think? Okay, so when Google announced that they were shutting down Reader, my world shrunk this little itty bitty little ball and, and poof, it was gone. So oh, was, like I was an old TV. Yes. Mm. And, um, I, I felt awful because I've been using Google reader for six years. I don't know since they launched it. Uh, I'd started using it the day that launched it. And, um, yeah, I was upset because, you know, what am I going to do to, to set this off to, to get my news after it's gone. And on July 1st, it will be shut down. Um, one thing I did is I went to Twitter and Google Plus and I added all the sites that I follow. And I don't strictly rely on those, but I see them throughout the day as I'm on Google Plus and Twitter. So I supplement the holes, the gaps with with social media. So I catch stuff as it's as it's going by. But but the thing with Feedly is that they're not just using their own service. So they they switch to their own um their own feed service. So you sign up for Feedly and you download the app and you can sync stuff between all your devices, your computers and everything. And it works just like Google Reader. The problem is that the interface doesn't look all that great if you want to quickly flick through everything like a, like a list. Okay. Because you get pictures. It's like Flipboard. It's, it's kind of how it is. So it, it looks nice, but it's not great for a quick, efficient reading like uh, Google Currents or something like that. See if um, you see what you think about some of these because actually I was just looking at the Twitter feed, which by the way I use Twitter as my as my informal RSS reader. Like that's basically how I get all my news is Twitter, because yeah. I follow all the news sources that I care about and I'm always in the feed. So I'm like, oh okay, cool. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, and as I was looking at Twitter just now while you were talking, Taylor, uh, I noticed that BGR has a story on this. Uh, Google Reader dies yeah. in two weeks. Here are all the best alternatives. Hold and on. Just Hold to give on. you a little bit of a list, uh, <laughs> we have News Blur. Feedly, Feedbin, Feed Wrangler, and Feeder, which yeah. t- tells us that not only that there are alternatives, but that people need to get more creative with their app names. Yes. Am I right? But the point I was making is that Feedly has effectively replaced Google Reader, and that is in the back end. So if you use another RSS feed, the chances are they've either switched to Tap2 or um, Feedly. And with Feedly, you can import your Google Reader account. 
before July 1st. So you can import all the feeds you followed and then you download an app like Press. Press is what I use mainly for my RSS feeds now. Mm -hmm. It looks just like Google Reader, but it's, it's prettier. It's really, really nice. If you've used Reader on iOS, Press is an Android version of that app, basically. And you import your Feedly. So you sign into Feedly in the Press app, and it works just like Google Reader, and it is actually 10 times better. So that's how I supplement, I, or how I've um, found an alternative. I've basically started using Press and Feedly side by side, and Twitter and Google Plus. So I'm always getting everything all the time. <laughs> Valuable advice, and uh, and Taylor, I'm glad you were here to answer it because, as I say, I was not experienced in it. So I, I hope that was a little bit of a help to you, Stephen, and, and thank you for writing in. And uh, it seems though as though we've we've cleared out the inbox for now. We still have some older ones sitting in there for uh, for when Tony is on the air. And uh, congratulations for Tony's 925 review, which I echo. I think Tony did a good job on that. So we will have him back in the air. Not to worry, but he's traveling back from London right now, and I'm sure he's just exhausted, or he's making he's he's renewing his friendship with his friend Jack Daniels. So we will let Tony <laughs> relax after his hard work. Yeah, let's uh, let's close it out. What do you say, Taylor? Should we should we jet Absolutely. here and let Absolutely. yeah give people a break my, from our, our our voices in their ears? My I, lungs hurt. I want to say if you've gotten this far, uh, two things. Number one, thank you for your comment on YouTube. Uh, there's always somebody who says, everyone, does everyone listen to all of podcasts ever? And then uh, thank you for that. I'll be re replying to you, I'm sure. And secondly, stay tuned for the Galaxy S4 active unboxing, which should happen later this afternoon if it arrives on time. A preemptive thank you to our friends at AT&T for that. But for now... Yeah, I'll, I'll unbox my wallet if you'd like. That would be great. If you could do that, that'd be Hey, would, aren't you supposed to be... Where's your gaming console? It doesn't come till later in July. Oh, okay. Well, then yes. we'll be hearing from you later then. Unless, hey, unless you're talking about the Ouya. I'm not talking about that. I'm okay. Not. But you know what? I, I want to talk to you on the BlackBerry Messenger. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. If you're a podcast listener and you, oh, yeah, uh, email me at michael at pocketnow.com. Send me your pen and maybe we'll be BBM friends. Maybe. Maybe. Because I'm carrying this Q10 as long as I can and it's a lot of fun. Stay tuned for more coverage on that. But for now, let's get out of here. That's going to do it for this episode of the Pocket Now Weekly. Hey, find us on Twitter. Brandon, who left earlier, is at Brandon Miniman. Taylor is at Caspertech, C-A-S-P-E-R-T-E-K. And as always, you can find me at at Captain Two Phones. It's Captain, the number two, phones. You can also follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, as Pocket Now on Facebook and Google+. You can leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music, and if you haven't done it, please do, because it helps us get discovered. And while we have wonderful reviews so far, we just don't have enough of them. Please leave us a review if you enjoy the show. And if you don't enjoy the show, please stay quiet. And if you have a topic question or a suggestion for the podcast or you just want to say hello do what other people do email us at podcast at pocketnow.com thanks for joining us we'll see you next week have a great weekend everyone bye bye oh I gotta have a ooh, ooh, I gotta have a sound effect for the thought thread now that we have sound effect for listener mail you can kick us off with an hello, Gavna. I'm not going to do <laughs> Taylor, I think you should kick us off with an hello, Gavna, but as loud as you can muster. Hello, Gavna! <laughs> oh, I just got the London tie-in. I just understood why this is relevant. Okay, yeah, I got it. All right. Actually, oh. you're looking into it too much. We're, we're just shouting things that come to yeah. work. No, I'm see, blowing I'm my mic out. Did my best. I did my best to justify this ridiculous <laughs> excursion into non-sensory, <laughs> and uh, well, and then I was torpedoed. Hey, I got it. an email this morning from Brandon saying that I was boring on the podcast as well as you, Michael. So I brought something new today. All right, what did you bring? <laughs> what? what did you bring? Say, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, read yeah. between the lines, Brandon. <laughs>